Michael, I'm sure this is not why you wanted to be back here, but can you just talk to me about the moment that everything happened, what you're feeling now? I mean, I'm honestly, I'm just trying to keep my composure and be a professional. Life happens. I'm no stranger to adversity, but this one hurts. I mean, records are records, numbers are numbers, but I really hope I get my win purse because I deserve it. And I won all three rounds, and we're two minutes left in the fight. I'm in mount and an arm triangle. And, uh, um, like, if the ref wouldn't have stopped the fight, even if the arm triangle didn't submit him, I was in mount. And I would have stayed in mount till the end of the fight, and I would have won the fight and got paid. And there's a tremendous amount of sacrifice that goes into this game and the sport from me and my family and uh, financial sacrifice. And so that's, you know, I did nothing wrong. I, I came up, I did my job, I fought as hard as I could. It was an exciting fight, it was a tough fight, and I won. There's been some talk on Twitter of some options of things that should have happened. Well, one would be restarting the fight somehow, one would be going to the scorecards. What do you think should happen in a situation like this where it's clear the referee made a mistake? Well, there was only two minutes left in the fight. You can't restart the fight, because that's not fair, unless you're going to start me back in the exact same position. But still, it's not the same, because now he's had rest, and he was drowning. So, you know, all respect to Nick, but he was slowing down, and he was, and I sounded like he was snoring to me, it sounded like he was snoring to the ref. Um, but yeah, they should go to the scorecards. Have you watched the replay yet? Do you believe that he was out? I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't watch the replay yet. Um, I heard the ref tell him three different times to show him that he was there. I did hear him like, you know, gurgling. Um, but like from the position of the arm triangle, I'm looking at the mat, so I can't see what the ref is seeing. But I mean, so I, you know, like, I don't know. But I, when I got signed to the UFC on Dana White looking for a fight, uh, I choked JJ Okonovich to sleep, but the exact same move up against the cage, arm triangle, and I put him completely to sleep. And I, when they stopped the fight with Okonovich, I didn't even think that he was asleep yet. So I had to stand up and look at him. I was like, oh my gosh, she is asleep. So, you know, it's hard to tell because sometimes when somebody passes out with a choke, they start seizing and moving. So from my vantage point, it would have been hard to tell, but it didn't feel like he was moving and he certainly wasn't going to get out. Uh, it looked like, you know, when you thought that you had won after they had stopped it, you guys spoke to each other. What what did you say to him in that moment? I told him it was a good fight. You're a warrior. You have a warrior spirit. You're built for this. And whatever's next for you, this is your way of life. You need to stay with it. And what would you like to see next? Would you like a rematch? Do you want to go on like you had a, w a win? What's your next steps in terms of the next fight? Well, I just need to spend some time with my family. Like I said, this is a tremendous amount of sacrifice for me to do this. Um, I have Garrett Armfield in camp to fight in Toronto. You know, I'm a full-time coach. So um, my next step is to go back and lock into his fight camp and uh, go spend some time with my family and work with the UFC to see if I can get my win money. And I guess last question for me, um, now putting your, your coach hat on, what kind of advice would you give your fighter if they were in this situation that maybe you can give to yourself now? I don't know. It's a tough one, man. I would, I would emphasize. Sorry, let me get some water. I think I would genuinely empathize with them, especially with this kind of money on the line. But my team is no stranger to adversity. You know, uh, I just got back from Abu Dhabi with Mike Breeden, where we had a sensational comeback win, knockout, stole the crowd, and he didn't get re-signed. You know, um, and then. Uh, we just got, got some other things going on with uh, one of the guys in the team that just seems a little unfair, too, and now this. So. But this is, you know, we're desert children. We're built for this. We're born through adversity, and nothing will stop us. Uh, congrats on the, you know, performance. I just want to real quick circle back to, like, the, put, the work you put in. You're really controlled. You got your takedowns in. You know, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because you definitely put in that camp. You came in here healthy, and, you, you, you know, you – made the most of that opportunity. How do you feel about your performance, man? Well, I mean, I was in the best shape of my life. And honestly, I was a tougher fight than I thought it was going to be, especially in the second round. We got in a little bit of a dog fight and some good exchanges. And um, up until they called it a no contest, I, I felt really good about it. And now what stinks is like the narrative of th this is going to take away from my actual performance. And now the whole narrative of the thing is going to be this, this no contest and this this wrong judges or refs call or whatever instead of like the actual fight that happened and the performance that took place. But I felt like it was a good fight. It was action packed. I, I gave max effort and I did my best. I do. Yeah, I, I agree totally. That was a great show. I saw your hands 
really in there too, able to set up some stuff. And I want to thank you for the way you handled it. I know you, the emotions are high. I'm sure this is not the best day, but it's a great way for other fighters to say, you know what, regardless of what's going on up in here, I'm going to act like a pro. I'm in the UFC. I'm that guy. So let me, you know, show that, that good example. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. I know that the commentary team was talking that uh, Shelby was talking to the, uh, the other commissioners and stuff at the very end of it. Did you get a chance to talk with him or any of the actual UFC officials after the fact? Sean, Sean came in um, <clears throat> when I was talking to the doctor. He was very kind. He told me I, I did good and I did my thing. And he said he'll talk to Dana and see what they can do. If they, and it sound, more than likely, I would hope that they would give you the win bonus. But barring anything outside of that, would you take a quick notice fight? I've seen in the past where it seems like fighters have been wrongly done. They give them a quick fight. I know you're busy with the coaching thing, but if their option is to give you a quick fight, would you take that? Well, when I got, I took a short notice fight for San Antonio to fight Manuel Torres, I made weight, and he went to the hospital during the weight cut. So I made weight, and I got off the scale, and they did that for me. They, they turned me in two weeks to UFC 287, and I, and I fought on that card, and I really appreciated that. But this is different because I was just in a freaking dog fight, you know. I cut weight. I was in a real three-round fight, and uh, I have other guys in camp, and I am a full-time coach, and we all sacrifice, and my family sacrifices, and uh, it's a lot for me to do these, and uh, I just don't think that I can turn around and do another short notice. I have to heal up, and, I mean, that was a real fight tonight. That wasn't like I just came in and something happened in the first two minutes, you know. I freaking fought the whole fight. So, um, no, I need to rest, recover, and uh, lock into uh, Garrett Arnfield's fight for Toronto. And I know the ending wasn't what you wanted, but looking back at the overall fight itself, are there moments of the fight that you can't that you can leave today happy on what occurred out there? Well, I'm happy with my performance, and and even at the end of the fight, like I had I had my submission, I fought through. I mean, I probably failed 10 takedowns. I didn't give up on myself. I stayed in the fight. I was in a a pretty good little scrap, and I I broke my opponent. I positioned him, I mounted him, and I put him in a submission that I know I can finish. So. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I won the fight. There's no way possible Nick was getting out of that. Anyone that has trained with me knows that. Anyone that knows my career knows that. And I, whether he tapped or not, Nick Moda knows he was not getting out. So in my eyes, I won the fight. I just hope I get paid. Thanks for coming back here today. I, I know that could have been easy, but I look forward to your next fight.